right, man, let's talk about Jake Paul uh, defeating Nate Diaz in his first 10 rounder. Uh, now had Nate Diaz went on to win, Jake Paul would have had to uh, give him $10 million a rematch in the PFL, MMA um, uh, league, whatever. I know they're in the playoffs or something right now. Um, and obviously, Jake Paul knew that wasn't going to happen. And Nate Diaz probably knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, but I did get up, and I basically slept through yesterday. Um, not even going to lie, I basically slept all through yesterday. And, um, you know, uh, but I did, I did, you know, say I wanted to wake up and um, and watch that and watch that match, uh, and I did. So I did say I wanted to wake up. And, and, and catch that match or whatever. So I did get that opportunity to uh um to see him man. And um, you know, Nate Diaz had great conditioning. If McGregor had his conditioning, you know, Conor McGregor, he probably would have been more of a problem in a boxing ring. Um, and also he was going against a guy on his first 10 rounder, but then I think this is his first boxing official match or exhibition ever. So he's in great condition. You can see why he gave Conor McGregor fits in the octagon or whatever you definitely could see why um but uh you know he just didn't have the boxing skills um it wasn't the worst you ever seen i mean he landed some good shots he just didn't know how to punch with them eight ounce gloves on and um you know it was just to the point where you know he didn't have no stank on the shots yeah he threw combinations and jake paul balled up and jake paul would throw a good counter i think he, he knocked him down with a counter left hook or something like that that he didn't see coming but Diaz got up, you know, Diaz finished good and, you know, he finished strong and took some rounds, you know, late from Jake Paul because he's actually a conditioned professional fighter. Jake Paul isn't. But, you know, like I said before, in a way it was competitive. But at, at the end of the day, dude, I mean, I mean, you know, he's duping people. He's fighting guys who have no back, boxing background. Um, he's destroying, you know, retired or ex UFC fighters. Um uh and that's what he doing he making a living but also they like the gold diggers you know what i'm saying uh you know other sport or combat sports you know i know if they fight fight jake paul you know Nate Diaz said i get one or two three more one you know or he said one or two to three times more than i get for the mma fight so it take me two or three mma fights just to just to get you know just to make this paycheck so they like the gold diggers uh of uh you know other situation of, of this thing and dana white you know he don't like it because you know um it, it making his fighters look bad crossing over to the boxing ring they have no boxing skills and and they try to degrade boxing and say it's a limited sport but at the end of the day all, all y'all get opportunity to cross over to fight jake paul or another prominent or a prominent boxer you you know all you guys gonna sit there and do it and, and go get that bag whatever so I mean, you know, Nate Diaz knew how to punch. It might have been a different scenario, but he was landing some good shots on Jake Paul. He put him in the guillotine choke for a second hold and put his hands up. And he landed some good shots here and there, snapped Jake Paul head back a little bit, but they really wasn't effective shots. Jake was throwing a really real effective power shots. Um, you know, and that's just like, you know, when you see Nganu get in there with Fury, you know, you're going to see the difference between actual boxer MMA fighters you know you see the difference between a YouTuber and the MMA fighter I mean you've seen the difference between the YouTube and a boxer when he fought Tommy Fury or whatever man I'm breaking out of my face I hate that um but yeah you've seen the difference between you know Tommy Fury and um and uh and Jake Paul but last night it was it was pretty much it was a show it was it's, it's just for entertainment it's not a real boxing match um, nowhere near a real boxing match, in my opinion. Uh, you know, like I said before, Jay Paul knew how, I mean, Nate Diaz knew how to punch. It probably been a different story. He played possum a couple of times, tried to bait Jake Paul in. Jake Paul knew better, but Jake Paul was moving his legs late just to keep that lactic acid from what it's building up in, the, in his muscles. And that's why you see somebody late in the fight kind of, you know, uh, get on a bike or move or bounce a little bit more. That's to get that blood flowing and not let that lactic build up in the, in the muscle so you can stay loose and you can make it through um that's why he started bouncing around and doing his thing a little bit so um 
you know, but like I continue to say, man, this is for entertainment purposes only, man. I mean, I don't know if people really paying their hard earned money on pay per view. They was in American Airlines Arena down there in Dallas. I don't know how his brother got there so fast from SummerSlam. They was doing SummerSlam with Detroit. You had Deion Cole who had two sold out shows. You had another show. You had another show. You know, some more show concerts going down there. Uh, yeah, I don't even go downtown Detroit no more, bro. Not for leisure. It's usually if it's business, it's business. I don't even fuck with it no more. Uh, just put too many black people in the area. I'm all right on that. Take it while you want to take it. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> but you know, nonetheless, bro, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it, it, it caught my attention. It kept me up. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I feel that, uh, I feel that, you know, you know, I mean, take it how you want to take it. I, I just feel that, you know, it's for entertainment. It's not real. Um, it's just maybe a step or half step above WWE. And he did lose to Tommy Fury. That was an actual boxer. So that's a little bit different. But you kind of want to know what, what value he bring to the sport. I mean, to, does he bring it to these platforms? First, it was Triller. How much money he bring in Triller? How much money he bring in Showtime? How much money? Now is he bringing to uh is he bringing to uh to the zone? I mean, at the end of the day, I think he did one on ESPN as well too. So how much money is he truly bringing to these platforms? And you know, if he's actually bringing a wealth of money in, then why no platform lock him up long term or keep doing this? I just think you know, people sports, you know, uh, sports networks and certain programs to show sports, they looking for. They're looking for programming. I mean, I seen them have the slippery step uh, competition where these people climb up slips while people throw like water and slime down these steps on ESPN. I seen the World Tag Team Championships on ESPN. I see these second rate basketball leagues on ESPN. So ESPN is thirsty for content, especially when basketball and football are not on. That's why I say if soccer was so popular in America, they could just throw on some soccer on ESPN, buy the rights to that. And get them through the summer, but nobody cares. If tennis was as popular as it used to be, nobody cares. So there's only the rest of these people, these sports networks gotta find programming. So Jay Paul is getting in where you fit in. I ain't mad at it, but you know what he doing is he found this lane beating up retired ex MMA uh, ex UFC fighters, and you know Nate Diaz can take a punch. Nate Diaz got great conditioning. Uh, maybe he had Jake Paul went to the body a little bit more, get a body tech going. Maybe he could have got him out of there. But he did drop them. But like I said before, um, it's strictly entertainment. You know, take a fight. You want to take it. He's not a real boxer. Is he starting to develop some solid skills? Absolutely. Um, he's fighting guys that he's naturally way bigger than, you know, fight somebody your own size. You know what I'm saying? Fight an actual boxer again. And when he, you know, when he had an opportunity to rematch Tommy Fury, you know, his people decided to go the other way. Because they know when an actual boxer get a look at you, beat you in a rematch, you know, Tommy Fury going to build on that and do even better in the rematch. So, um, you know, but it is what it is. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is just part of the, rep uh, the repercussions of Jake Paul, of Dana White not paying his fighters. If Dana White paid his fighters the way he could pay his fighters or should pay his fighters, you you wouldn't you wouldn't get this. You wouldn't get this as much. You know, somebody gonna be greedy and the extra money, but if he paid his fighter like he paid he's supposed to pay his fighters, this wouldn't be an issue. And this is just, you know, this is just a cause and effect to that. Let's call it what it is. It's just a cause and effect to that. Pay your fighters like they're supposed to be paid, and then they wouldn't have to go do clown shows. But he's stubborn, he's gonna wait to the last minute where you gotta overpay. And that's one thing in life, you know, if you handle a problem from the beginning, it won't be as expensive later on. And, you know, sometimes we do that. Sometimes great businessmen like Dana White do they let their pride, uh, you know, get before, you know, anything. You know, they let their pride get before anything. They let their pride get before anything. So, and then, you know, when you got power, it's hard when you got power not to abuse it. You know, the great ones who don't abuse their power and try to kind of like, you know what I'm saying, you know, be even killed. A lot of the times the 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 people or something makes you abuse that abuse that abuse that power. 
So either way, a lot of times you're going to have to flex your muscle anyway. You know, so, but yeah, people will make you do it. You know, people make you do it, babe. Let me know what you girls and guys. Let me know what you guys and guys think in the comment section. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live or drop video. Uh financially want to support the channel. Cash up dollar sign CJ Good 313. Venmo CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Uh, check out the, I don't know what to call this, fire reaction playlist, I would guess. Um, peace.